Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In terms of programming, Java is a very vast subject. There are high chances that a beginner couldn't always cover every topic for an interview. But what if you can stay on the safer side with the most frequently asked top 10 questions that could always back you up? This video from Simply Learn is about the same. Here, we will discuss the top 10 tricky and most frequently asked Java interview questions. So before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without further ado, let's get started with the top 10 Java interview questions. So the top 10th question in our list for today is, what is multi-threading? So the answer for this question is, multi-threading is a procedure of executing two or more threads simultaneously to perform a certain operation via utilizing the CPU resources to the maximum. Multiple threads do not need separate memory allocation for each one of them. So, by this way, they also save time and memory and run in parallel to each other. So, followed by the 10th question, let us move on to the top 9th question. Does Java include pointers? Now, this question is most frequently asked amongst many interviews for the beginners. So basically, Java has Java Virtual Machine. So in that instance, we have some advantages and we might not need pointers exactly there. Now let's look into the answer. So Java includes Java Virtual Machine, which automatically takes care of memory allocations. So we do not find any use of pointers in real-time programming in Java. And also, Java has its own garbage collector to free the unused memory as well. Moving on to the next question. What are JDK, JVM and JRE? This is also one of the commonly asked questions. Now let us discuss the full forms of JDK, JVM and JRE and also what are their functionalities. So JDK stands for Java Development Kit. So this is the package which you download for your JVM and JRE together. So when you download JDK from the official Oracle website, you will be getting the packages of JVM and JRE together and you need to download them and later install them. After installing JDK, you need to set the path for JVM and JRE together. More about that in how to install Java in your Windows system. And the link to the video is added in the description box below. Kindly check it. Now moving on to the next one, which is JVM. So JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. So this is the tool that is mainly responsible to convert your program into bytecode. So basically, when you run a Java code, the compiler will not directly run your code. First, it will convert the entire program directly into the bytecode and that particular bytecode is run by the compiler. This is the main reason why Java is being platform independent. So moving on to the next one, that is JRE. JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment. So Java Runtime Environment is the one which is responsible to provide you all the class libraries and resources for the code execution. Now moving on to the next question. What is the difference between overloading and overriding? So by now, I suppose most of you have been facing this question in many interviews. So the fundamental difference between the overloading and overriding is as follows. When you have two or more methods in the same class with the same name, but different parameters, Parameters in the sense, the number of values you pass to your function call. For example, let us imagine that we have two functions by the name add and the function that they will be performing is addition. So one method will be having two variables. For example, add int a int b. So you are sending two values to the function and another function with the same name that is add will have three values that is add int x int y int z. So here we have different parameters, but with the same function call. This type of scenario is called as overloading in Java. Now let us discuss about overriding in Java. When the method signature has same name and same number of parameters in both superclass and child class, then it is called as overriding. Now let us imagine that we have the same method that is add int a int b in both superclass and child class. Now, superclass is something which has highest priority. Let us imagine that 
we have to call a method from child class. So based on the priority of the function call, the JVM might call the method from child class ignoring the superclass. So this is where a method got overridden by the priorities. So this particular act is called as function overriding or method overriding in Java. Now moving forward, we have our next question. What is package in Java? Remember that whenever you write a code in Java, you need a package. So especially when you're working on a high-end IDE like Eclipse, you need to define the package first. It is possible that for some minor programs which you can run on command prompt, you don't need a package, but it is a good habit to use a package. So here the question is, what exactly is a package? A package in Java is a namespace that organizes a set of related classes and interfaces. Conceptually, you can think of packages as being a similar version of your folders in your computer. Now moving on to the next question. Which is the base class of all the exceptions in Java? Or you can also consider this question as which is the library that is responsible for all the exceptions in Java? So the answer for this question is the parent class or the base class for all the exceptions in Java is java.lang library. Now the next question. If I import a package, will the JVM import all the sub packages of the imported package? Now let us imagine that you're working on a package called X and you needed something from a different package. Let us imagine that package is A. So that package has already imported few more packages like B, C and D. So let us imagine again, you have a package that you are currently working on that is X and you needed something from a different package that is A. So A has already imported package B, package C and package D. So if you now import package A into package X, then do you have the possibilities that you also import package B, C, D along with A? So the answer for this question is no. When you import a specific package, then the sub packages of the same will not be imported. Here in this scenario, if you wanted to include package A into package X, then you can do it. But the packages that A already included in itself, that is B, C and D will not be imported into X. However, the developer can manually import the sub packages when finds necessary. So if the developer needs the sub packages that is B, C and D, he can manually import it into X, but they will not come automatically when you import A into X. Now moving ahead into our next question. Does Java has go to statement? So go to is something we can face in some programming languages like C. Now does Java also support that? The answer for this question is no. Java does not have go to statement, but it has something similar called labels. So labels are used to change the flow of a program and jump to a specific instruction and label is based on a condition. Now moving ahead into our next question. Is it possible to have a class compiled without main method? Yes. So the main method is always the starting point for compiling for a compiler or an interpreter. But can you compile a complete class without a main method? So this is one of the frequently asked questions. So in Java, it is possible. You can execute a Java program without a main method by using static block. Static block in Java is a group of statements that gets executed only once when the class is loaded into the memory by Java class loader. It is also known as static initialization block. Now the last question in our list. Can a dead thread be restarted in Java's multi-threading? So there are chances that sometimes you need to kill a thread. So sometimes after you kill a thread, you feel that that thread might be important for your program. So is it kind of possible to restart it again? The answer for this question is no. Once a thread is terminated in Java, you cannot restart it. Now with that, we have come to an end of this top 10 interview questions in Java. 
If you have any queries regarding the questions discussed in this tutorial or if you feel that we have missed out anything important, then please feel free to let us know in the comment sections below. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.